Well, good morning at the uh, second or third attempt or whatever it is. Here we are live. It's the morning of Wednesday, 7th of November, 2018. Had a few uh, technical issues, um, not least uh, due to the rather blustery conditions here, knocking the tripod over and uh, setting everything live before I was actually set up. Anyway, the title of today's broadcast is, is this the death knell for the UK mother frackers? Well, of course, they're not going to uh, ride away qui quietly into the sunset. They're going to go kicking and screaming. And, of course, kicking, screaming, whinging, bitching is all that Francis Egan has been doing for the past couple of weeks. Having bragged for the last nearly six years that uh, fracking could be done safely. It could be done keeping seismic activity below 0.5, uh, acknowledging, whoo, acknowledging that it is rare for seismic activity in the, in the process caused, in the process of fracking, to be anything above 0.5. Well, of course, the evidence of the past fortnight shows how ridiculous that statement was, how arrogant and how ignorant because now that they have triggered multiple events above 0.5, of course, they are desperate to get the government to increase those limits. Well, the good news is that uh, Lancashire MPs from uh, both major persuasions have uh, written now to Greg Clark. Now, what's interesting, of course, they wrote to Greg Clark, not to Claire Perry. So they've They've written to the organ grinder and not the, got to be careful here, not the one who turns the organ on behalf of the organ grinder. Is that politically correct enough for the 21st century? Well, Claire, I think you may have also realised that you have been set up as the sacrificial lamb here. So that's why the industry is running to you because they think that you are more likely to push for an increase of the limit than Greg will, because Greg has a future political career to protect. You are already at the pinnacle of your political career, and uh, frankly, you're making a right hash of it anyway. So, the smartest thing that you've done recently, Claire Perry, of course, is to state that it would be politically unwise, although even that gives the lie to your thinking, it would be politically unwise to increase the uh, level at which, the seismic activity level at which Quadrilla have to cease fracking. In fact, of course, what is ridiculous is that they only have to cease fracking for 18 hours. Although, of course, the likelihood is that they're just going to go back in and trigger another event, which will cause them to stop for another 18 hours. Meanwhile, I'm sure that uh, Schlumberger, of course, have probably made contact with uh, Centrica just to make sure that Centrica is going to underwrite the rapidly increasing costs of having Schlumberger on site there. And, of course, we know that you haven't fired up the frack pumps yet to initiate a full frack. You are still simply pressurizing to the point at which the geology starts to give way. And I think now it's becoming increasingly apparent to you and everybody watching that the moment that you do fire those pumps up and go for a full frack, you're going to trigger something way in excess of probably 1.5. And uh, that will pretty much be that, because the pressure will be such that uh, the industry will not be able to move forward. The only problem we have with the MPs that have written to Greg Clark is that they've called for a moratorium. A moratorium isn't good enough here. A moratorium was what was imposed the last time Quadrilla messed up by triggering some 80-odd seismic events, the two most significant being April 1st and May 27th of 2011, 2.3 and 1.5 respectively, and that was enough to have a moratorium in place until mid-December 2012. And of course, the whole purpose of a moratorium is to hope that 
people basically forget about it. They go on to other things. They get on with their lives. And then when everything is uh, conveniently quiet, then they just crack on and uh, go back in and start fracking. That is not going to be acceptable this time round. The industry has to be shut down once and for all in the UK, period. Well, of course, there are other pressures here. And, uh, you know, the fact that um, uh, Francis Egan had acknowledged five years ago, in fact, in an interview conducted in August of 2013, Francis Egan acknowledged that the prospect of using wells for deep uh, disposal, deep geological disposal of toxic nuclear waste was on his radar. Of course, he tried to dismiss it as a conspiracy theory, but here we are over five years on, and not only has it never been dismissed by either the British government or by uh, radioactive waste management, the uh, part of British nuclear fuels is responsible for dealing with the disposal. Neither has it ever been denied by the unconventional gas industry. So call it a hunch, but I think that, uh, you know, the um, backers of this industry are looking long term. They know fine well because they will have done their due diligence on this industry in the US and they will know that in the US, the industry is in a world of financial hurt with companies going bankrupt left right and center and uh, it needing literally increased amounts of borrowing just to keep rolling whereas of course if those uh, deep wells can ultimately be used for the disposal of toxic nuclear waste then that's a revenue stream for the next what a oh, couple hundred thousand years or well, thereabouts ridiculous though it may seem that's what goes through the minds of the uh, sociopaths. So, you know, calling for a moratorium may be the start, but actually it's not a moratorium that's needed here. It has to be a definitive end to this abomination. And, uh, you know, just, to just start to look at the dichotomy of the rhetoric and the reality. You know, we've got rhetoric that says we're pushing for green energy and uh, you know we want to cut down on pollution and yet the corporatist agenda uh, of liberty for the corporatists basically means that you can do whatever you like you can screw the planet you can rape you can pillage the planet in whatever way you want in return for corporate profit and the reason government of course goes along with this is on the promise that there's some tax revenues that come along with it but uh, I think as uh, surely even the most um, intellectually challenged members of uh, Parliament, which of course uh, certainly includes Claire Perry, uh, even these people are able to see that the likelihood of tax revenues from this industry is slim to none. This industry has uh, very successfully developed a model whereby not only do they not pay tax, they actually get the government to pretty much contribute to uh, uh, a very significant element of their expenses, not least start up and wind down, which funnily enough, always tend to equate to any profit they made during the course of production. So the people who have the misfortune to live in the sacrifice zone of the Filed Peninsula, if, if you really take the opportunity now even if you've been sitting on the fence for the past five or six years just watching things unfold now is the time to get off the fence and add your voice to the weight of those who are calling for this industry to be drawn to a halt you know i've seen videos published recently of how new investment in blackpool is going to turn the town that has the uh, lowest life expectancy uh, for males, certainly in the country, how they're going to regenerate it. Yet at the same time, they're going to turn it into a gas field. Well, as Brian Monk says, you know, you don't live in a gas field, you die in a gas field. So, uh, you know, it's not a case of listening to the rhetoric, it's looking at the, the facts. But meanwhile, over here in uh, North Nottinghamshire, 
uh, I guess don't seem to have yet got the the memo that the uh, industry is um, you know really on its last legs basically and they still seem to be intent on bringing a rig into Tinker Lane which is about seven miles south of uh, where I'm standing right now in the uh, the Kirby Mispeton, uh, Kirby Mispeton, there's a blast from the past at uh, the Misson Springs uh, Protection Camp here. And, uh, you know, Tinker Lane is just 15 miles to the uh, south-southeast of, of Doncaster, and uh, you know, just a few miles to the east of the South Yorkshire border. And, uh, of course, Ineos are also in the wings, and Jim Ratcliffe and... Um, uh, uh, Tom Pickering must be fuming at Francis Egan right now as uh, they perceive Francis Egan's incompetence to be killing off any opportunity they never really had of establishing um, an unconventional gas industry uh, as part of the Ineos revenue. Well, uh, obviously the people this side of the Pennines, um, the call is for you to come and support the local community and the protectors at Tinker Lane and then of course shortly afterwards no doubt uh, I guess we'll also look to uh, establish a well at um, uh, here at Misson Springs but you know as we saw in 2014 when the iGas stock plummeted at the uh, at the magnitude of the opposition to their attempt to establish a uh, a well site or an exploratory well at Barton Moss then the same will occur here once the rig appears it is going to be a beacon to the communities of South Yorkshire and North Nottinghamshire and then the resistance will be ramped up beyond anything that IGAS experienced at uh, Barton Moss unless of course Greg Clark does the right thing and uh, shuts this down before it even gets to that stage well meanwhile um of course uh, a few days ago um the mayor of malton paul andrews sought to get a judicial review and against the government's uh, joint ministerial statement issued earlier this year which was issued following uh, north york's county council's decision to establish a a uh, 500 meter exclusion zone between any residential property or any school, hospital, public building, and a potential frack site. And of course, Ineos at the time reacted and said, well, it basically kills the industry, uh, stone dead right from the get-go. Well, <laughs> hey, what do you know? Maybe that was the intention all along. Well, obviously Ineos and uh, um, uh, Third Energy in their death throes, ran to the government and asked them to do something about it. And what followed was the joint ministerial statement, which Paul Andrews challenged. Now, to all intents and purposes, it would seem on the face of it that uh, Paul Andrews failed in his attempt to establish a judicial review of that joint ministerial statement. But a closer inspection of what actually occurred would suggest that actually Paul Andrews didn't so much lose as the government shot itself in the foot. And the key element here is that part of the British government's defence in trying to resist the judicial review from taking place was that the ministerial statement is simply a guideline. Now, that was not the understanding, I think, of either Paul Andrews or even um, North Yorkshire County Council. And it certainly wasn't the intention of Greg Clark and James Brockenshire when they issued this joint ministerial statement. But now we have de facto an admission in court as part of the defence that there's no case to answer because it was simply a guideline. So this has very, very significant ramifications, not just in terms of this particular ministerial statement, but any other ministerial statement. Because in terms of um, 
actually requiring any action down the political chain, then you can say, well, thanks very much, that's a guideline, but uh, you know, we're going to carry on and do what we do. Um, and that, of course, is what localism surely is all about. So actually, congratulations to Paul Andrews and uh, the team uh, trying to seek this uh, judicial review because although in the records it would seem that uh, you lost that application but I think you can actually hold your head up and say that what you achieved as a result of, uh, of that hearing is nothing short of absolutely very very significant. So meanwhile changing the subject for a second on the week commencing the 19th of November I will be in London at Southwark Crown Court supporting a gentleman uh, by the name of David Noakes. Now David Noakes will be in court, it will be a five day sentencing hearing uh, because David Noakes had the audacity to develop GC Math, which is a well known and well established cure for cancer. Oh I'm not allowed to say cure for cancer uh, because that goes against the 1939 Cancer Act. So let me rephrase that. Uh, David Noakes had developed an extremely effective cancer treatment and uh, this um, case has been delayed for four years and the reason being is because the Medicines and Healthcare Regulatory Authority actually needed to wait until everybody who was being treated with GCMAF died and of course what the MHRA are claiming, will claim in court, is that those people died as a result of being administered GCMAF. The reality is that those people died because the British government, through the MHRA, cut off their supply of GCMAF. So uh, I'm sure that many, many people watching this are very well aware that uh, the British government has no intention of uh, curing cancer and uh, it's a massive revenue stream for the pharmaceutical industry and I think as most people will acknowledge there's no money in health but there's a hell of a lot of money in sickness and Big Pharma intends to continue to milk that as much as it possibly can. So this is uh, an opportunity to see the vindictiveness, to see the sociopathy of the British government via the MHRA, the Medicines Healthcare and Regula Regulatory Authority, which is staffed by people who are, unsurprisingly, all ex-pharmaceutical industry. So if you want to see um, how this works, how cures, cancer cures, are being prevented from uh, being um, marketed in the UK and elsewhere, then come along and join me at the um, sentencing hearing for David Noakes, which will be uh, at Southwark Crown Court in South East London, uh, starting at uh, 10 o'clock on the morning of Monday, the 19th of November. And uh, just a reminder, uh, for those who are interested, I should be hosting an event in London on Sunday, uh, 2nd of December, uh, titled Democracy in Chains, where we'll be looking at the documentary evidence which shows that the agenda to undermine democracy and replace it with a libertarian regime that is only libertarian for the global corporatists. It's liberty for the sociopathic global corporatists to do whatever they want and to make sure that true democracy is effectively quashed and if you think that's a conspiracy then you know make your way along to the crown plaza uh, in kensington on uh, sunday 2nd of december and see the glaring evidence for yourself and if you want to get advanced tickets they can be obtained from uh, alternative view or one word alternative view.co.uk Okay, that's uh, it for me today. I'm um, not quite doing a Fox News and uh, leaning into the wind, but it's really quite blustery here. Uh, but I will be back from another location in the UK 
on Friday morning at 8.30. Meanwhile, keep the pressure on the British government and in particular Greg Clark and his uh, site, site, no, um, organ player uh, Claire Perry <coughs> to get this industry shut down. It's a non-starter and they know it. They just need a way to be able to shut it down, saving as much face as possible. Well, good luck with that. See you on Friday.